Welcome to our review of Polar Everything and uh, Happy Snow Day. Alright, the directions on 1 through 3 say express in trig form, and the other thing we want to be concerned about on um, 1 and 2 at least is that we need our answer to be in radians, our angle to be in radians, and on 3 it says to give the answer in degrees. So for each of these, we need to know two things. We need R and theta units, and we're going to plug into what trig form normally looks like. Now, to get R and theta, we need to think about where this point lies in our complex, complex plane, which, remember, this is our real axis, and this is our imaginary axis, and so negative 1 plus I means go left 1 and up 1. And when we do this, we don't keep the i, we just look at the number that's in front. So right here is negative 1 plus 1i. And what I can do is I can make a nice triangle out of that. And then do the things we've been doing in trig for months now, like find the hypotenuse, either using the Pythagorean theorem or realizing this is a special right triangle that makes the hypotenuse be square root of 2. And if I realize it's a special right triangle, the inside is 45, which means to get around to this, um, this triangle is 3 pi over 4. So r is square root of 2, theta is 3 pi over 4. And then I plug into uh, my trig form equation, which is r cosine theta plus i sine theta. And that's all we have to do in, on that one because that's trig form and we express our answer in radians. And this is going to be similar. Give answer in radians. Now our number here is 4 and since there's not an imaginary part to it we can think about it as though there is. And again we need r and theta and we're going to draw a picture. So 4 is to the right, positive 4 and real 4 is over here. Um, and then since it's plus 0, i, it doesn't go up or down. So since there's not a triangle, r is actually, another way of thinking of it is, what is the distance to get to this point? When we have a triangle, that's our hypotenuse, but if we don't, it's just whatever that number is, um, the absolute value of that number. Uh, so this is 4 for r radius or r and then theta is zero either in degrees or radians um, and so since it asks for radians we wouldn't put a degree symbol we'd just leave it as zero and then we plug in and that's it that's our answer now this third one for one thing, it says give answer in degrees, and I know that the first time I did this, I did not pay attention, and I did this in radians. I'm pretty sure some of you uh, will likely have done that as well. But that's okay. We need r and theta, and if we graph this, negative 3 means to go left 3, negative 2 means to go down 2, and so that means our, our point is down here, and that's where we're going to draw our triangle. Now this time we really will need to use these things we know about triangles to find r and theta because this is not a special right triangle which means that r is negative 2 squared plus negative 3 squared square rooted which is the Pythagorean theorem. So that's 4 plus 9 which is 13 so r is square root of 13. Now theta will be a little bit more difficult to get. I'm going to find this angle first by using inverse tangent because I know the opposite and adjacent side. Um, and technically we could use any trig function we want, but it's best practice to use tangent since we know negative 2 and negative 3 are correct. Um, if I messed up and square root of 13 wasn't right and I do square root of 13 for sine or cosine, then that would make that wrong as well automatically, so that wouldn't be good. So we do 
inverse tangent of opposite over adjacent, which means that we have to plug this into our calculator. Um, and when we do, since it wants degrees, we need to be in degree mode, so that 33.690. But obviously to get around, all the way around to this line is not 33 degrees. That is this reference angle that's on the inside. And so what we need to do is we need to add um, this part to what we already know. And so in degrees, that's 180. So I add 180 degrees and I get 213.690 for theta. Now that means I just need to plug this stuff into trig form. So square root of 13, cosine 213.690 plus I sine 213.690. That's my answer. These next couple, we're going the other way. We're given trig form and we want complex form, which means a plus bi. Um, so what we're going to do is distribute, but we also need to figure out what cosine of 3 pi over 4 and sine of 3 pi over 4 are. And so 3 pi over 4 is over here in the second quadrant um, at with a 45 degree reference angle, which means our two points on the unit circle are negative square root of 2 over 2, which will be cosine, and positive square root of 2 over 2 will be sine. So that's cosine and sine, and then we need to distribute the 2. And when we distribute the 2, this is like 2 over 1, so the 2's will cancel. Uh, when I distribute to the first one, these 2's cancel. Then when I distribute to the second one, they cancel again which leaves us with negative square root of 2 plus i square root of 2 for our answer. Number 5 um, is the same kind of deal, very similar actually, and 11 pi over 4 uh, we might have more trouble finding, but it is on the unit circle or a special right triangle, depending on how you want to think about it. And to do that we would say how many times does 4 go into 11? It goes twice with 3 left over. And so what we're doing is we're going to go 2 pi, which is a full circle, and then I'm going to go 3 pi over 4, which is actually over here, which I think is where we were on the last problem. So I get negative square root of 2 over 2 for cosine, and square root of 2 over 2 for sine, and then I'm going to distribute 3. Now this time, this 3 won't cancel anything out, it will just end up being um, placed on top next to our square root. So this is negative 3 square roots of 2 over 2 plus i, well that i probably is not going to go right there. Um, it's probably going to go, it really doesn't matter to me where you put the i, but I know the book was putting it like here, 3 i squared to 2 over 2. I'd be fine with you putting 3 squared to 2 over 2 and then just putting the i after it. It's kind of whatever you want to do, but the i needs to be somewhere in that second thing. Find the product. So we had formulas for this, which I'm not going to give you on the test, so you need to memorize, but the formulas are really easy. When I'm finding the product, I multiply the r's together, so 18 times 6, and I add my angles together. So I need to do 5 pi over 6 plus 5 pi over 3. Okay, so all you have to do is remember product means multiply the r's, add the angles. Now to add these angles, we need some common denominators. The second denominator we can change into a 6 if we multiply by 2. So we got to do that to the top and the bottom, which is going to make this be 10 pi. So 5 pi plus 10 pi is 15 pi over 6. I can reduce that by dividing them both by 3, so that's 5 pi over 2. 
So that's the angle that I'm going to put into my answer. And uh, while we're at it, we can also do 18 times 6 for real and get um, 108 cosine 5 pi over 2 plus i sine 5 pi over 2. And the directions are a little unclear on this, uh, whether to leave it like this or leave it or to change it to complex form. So to change it to complex form, uh, we would figure out where 5 pi over 2 is, which if you're looking at uh, your unit circle or whatever, pi over 2 is up here, 3 pi over 2 is down here, which means 5 pi over 2 would be back up here. So cosine here is 0 and sine is 1. And so we can change this to 108 times 0 plus 1i, which means that our answer is really just 108i. Uh, and I'll try to make sure that it specifies clearly on the test, like which form to leave it in. But generally speaking, like if it's nice numbers um, that are on the unit circle, we would go ahead and find it. But if it's not, then most of the time you'd leave it. So. Number seven, so the quotient, you divide the numbers in front, which gives us um, a half. So our number in front is going to be a half. And we subtract our angles, the first one minus the second one. And to do that, we'll have to get common denominators. So this time, I have to change both of them. I'm going to get them both to be 12. We could also get them to be 24 if we wanted to, if we didn't realize 12 was an option. So this is 10 pi minus 3 pi over 12, which is 7 pi over 12. Um, we could technically find that using uh, sum of difference identities, but that seems like a lot of work. So we're just going to plug this in and leave it. This is 1 half cosine 7 pi over 12 plus i sine 7 pi over 12. Now, if we do actually want to find complex form on this, the standard form, uh, then we would distribute 1 half and do cosine 7 pi over 12 and sine 7 pi over 12 on our calculator in radian mode. If we do that, we'd get negative 0 0.129 plus i. Well, that i doesn't go there. It goes at the end. Plus 4.82i. So, um, but normally we would probably just leave it like this because it's not a, something we can find the exact value of. We're going to give you Demoivre's theorem, and so, but although Demoivre's theorem is actually really easy, or about as easy as the other ones to memorize, the product and quotient, what I do is I take the power I'm raising it to, and I do r to that power, and then I'm going to do cosine of that number times whatever my angle is. So this is kind of weird, but I took the formula and I plugged in in. I know what n is, and so now I need to figure out r and theta. So to do that, I'm going to draw a picture. 1 goes right, negative 1 would go down. So our triangle is over here. It is a special right triangle where our radius is square root of 2. And our angle to get all the way around there would be 7 pi over 4. And so I'm just going to plug those things into what I already have here. Square root of 2 to the 8th power, cosine, and that 8 theta, that's inside of our cosine. And so we want to multiply by 8 before we try to take the sine or cosine, um, which is important that you do it in that order. So square root of 2 to the 8th power, you've got four pairs of square root of 2, and each of those pairs is 2, so it's really like 2 to the 4th power, 
which is 16. You could actually just type that into the calculator um, since it does work out to be a nice number. And then 8 times 7 over 4, the 8 and the 4 will cancel, so this is actually just 14 pi. Which is actually kind of nice because 14 pi is an even pi, uh, which means that it is on the right side over here with 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, and so on until we get to 14 pi. So cosine of that is 1 and sine of that is 0. And so if we distribute the 16, we actually just get the number 16. Go figure. Turning the page. Number 9, we're going to use that same theorem again, but this time our r and theta are not on the unit circle. We're going to have to use our calculator. We have positive 2 and positive 3, so we are in the first quadrant. And we actually had this combination of sides earlier, so you might already know that that side should be square root of 13. But um, it doesn't really say which way to have our angle, and so we should really default to radians. Um, also, our sides are actually opposite of what they were before, so we would want to be careful there. Inverse tangent of opposite over adjacent in radian mode gives us 0 0.983. Now, What's nice is this is the first quadrant, which means that 0 0.983, that's really what our angle is. We don't have to add or subtract anything. So I know that r is square root of 13, and we are raising that to the fifth power, because that's what n is. I don't need that equal sign. There we go. And in parentheses, we've got cosine of our angle plus, oh, wait. I need to multiply it by 5. So cosine of 5 times 0 0.983 plus I sine 5 times 0 0.983. So um, I'm going to actually do 5 times 0 0.983 first, and then I would take the sine or the cosine of it to if I was actually going to figure out the points. And so one thing we can do actually here on the outside is the square root of 13 to the fifth power. I've got two pairs of the square root of 13, which would give me um, 13 times 13, which is 169. Then I have a square root of 13 left over. Do you need to write out square root of 13 five times so that you can see how that happens? Then go for it. Uh, 5 times 0.983 is 4.915. And so because of how big this number is on the outside, if we type this into our calculator to find standard form, we get really big numbers, 122.616 plus, no, just kidding, minus. Five nine six point eight seven four I. All right, ten, eleven, and twelve all ask us for uh, roots of a number, and so we're going to use that formula, which I will give you on the test. And uh, we do want to pay attention to the directions. This one says to leave in trig form, and then the next two say to go and write it in complex form. Now, we're taking the fourth root of negative 5, so n is 4, because it's the fourth root, which means that k in our formula is going to start at 0, and we're going to go until we have four numbers, so 0 through 3. Now, my complex number, negative 5, might help if I write plus 0i, and if I think about where that point is over here, and so that means r is 5, it's the distance to that point, which is a positive 5. r will always be positive, dg dubs. And then theta is the angle to get around to here, which would be 
pi, which it says to use radians, so I used radians. Now we're ready to plug everything in. Our formula says that we're going to do the nth root, so the fourth root of r, which is 5, and in our uh, angle, that's where it gets a little complicated, we're going to do theta plus 2 pi k over 4. The same thing is going to happen for sine. Now, uh, the ones, some of the ones we did in class, we had to get the common denominators in our angle and stuff, uh, which takes some work, but these both are already good as far as that goes. So we're just going to plug in uh, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So when I plug in 0 for k, I get rid of this 2 pi because it'll be 0. So I just have pi over 4. So when I plug in 0, my angle is just pi over 4. This would actually be a kind of easy one to put in standard form because pi over 4 and the angles we're going to get those will all be on the unit circle, but this fourth root of 5 is not going to uh, play nicely with the square root of 2 over 2 that we would get, so I'm kind of happy that we're just leaving it in good form. Alright, when I plug in 1 for k, I have pi plus 2 pi on top, which is 3 pi, so my angle is 3 pi over 4. And then I'm going to do 2 inside of here, so that's pi plus 4 pi, which will be 5 pi. Or at this point you might notice that there's a pattern here, we're going up by 2 pi on the top each time. So our last angle should be 7 pi over 4. And the biggest thing to remember here um, is that if I am finding fourth roots, that means I should have four answers, so I need to plug in four numbers. Technically, uh, we could do one, two, three, and four. When I plug in four, I would get nine pi over four, which is the same as pi over four, so I'd still get the right answers. I just think it's easier to plug in zero personally, but uh, yeah, anyway. Find the fifth roots, or five roots of unity. Um, so unity is a number, which if you think about what number would unity mean if it had to mean a number, hopefully you're like, oh yeah, totally would be one, because a unit, if we're talking about just a unit, that's usually one. All right, so, and then we can leave, I mean, we can put plus zero i there to help us with that trig function. Finding fifth root, so n is 5, which means k. We're going to plug in 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. r, if I think about 1 plus 0 i, which is over here, uh, r would be 1, and theta would be 0. And it does tell us to write the answers in complex form. So starting off with our formula, we're going to do the fifth root of 1 cosine 0 plus 2 pi k over n, which is 5, plus i sine 0 plus 2 pi k over 5. Now, the fifth root of 1, of like the real number 1, is just 1, so this is going to just go away and we're not going to have to deal with that. Uh, k equals 0, when I plug it in I get 0 plus 0 on top, which makes this 0, so I'll have cosine 0 plus i sine 0, which if I find complex form for that, cosine of 0 is 1, sine of 0 is 0, so I get 1 plus 0 i, and now I'm going to do k equals 1, so I get cosine, I plug a 1 in here and get 2 pi over 5, for my angle.
and it wants it in complex form. So I would need to get my calculator out in radian mode and type in cosine of 2 pi over 5 and sine of 2 pi over 5 and write down those decimals. So I get 0 0.309 plus 0 0.951. And then I'm just going to keep going. So here I plug in 2, so that's 4 pi over 5. This gives me negative 0 0.809 plus 0.587. And I plug in 3, and I get 6 pi over 5. Which is, we're going to end up seeing our decimals repeat, because we end up having um, similar reference angles going on here. And then k equals 4, plug in 4 and get 8 pi over 5. Notice if we were to keep going and plug in another number, we'd get 10 pi over 5, which is 2 pi, which is the same as 0, which was the first one we got. If I plug this in, I get 0 0.309 plus i minus should really pay more attention here. All right, minus 0.951i. So here are our answers, since we wanted it in complex form. Number 12, find the four roots of negative one. So that means n is four, k is zero, one, two, and three. Negative 1 plus 0i means that we're over on this side now. So r is positive 1 because it's the distance to our point, which is always positive. And our angle is pi. So I'm going to fill in my formula. The fourth root of r, which is 1, cosine, um, angle pi plus 2 pi k over 4 plus i sine pi plus 2 pi k over 4. And so now I'm going to plug in 0, 1, 2, and 3. The fourth root of 1, we're talking about uh, just like the real number 1, the fourth root of that is going to be just 1. And so we're going to get rid of that and not worry about it. So when k is 0, we'll put a 0 here, which gets rid of this term. So I have just pi over 4. It does want these in complex form. So cosine and sine of pi over 4 are both square root of 2 over 2. When I plug in 1, I will have pi plus 2 pi on top, which gives me 3 pi. So cosine of 3 pi over 4 will be negative square root of 2 over 2. Sine will be positive still. And then when I plug in 2, that'll be pi plus 4 pi, which is 5 pi. Which 5 pi over 4 is in the third quadrant, so both of our angles, I mean both of our 
both our sine and our cosine will be negative. And then k equals 3. So I plug in 3 and get pi plus 6 pi, which is 7 pi. Therefore, And that's in the fourth quadrant where cosine is positive and sine is negative. So that's our answer. Now we're into our polar stuff. And so one thing that we're going to need to make sure we have memorized is x equals r cosine theta y equals r sine theta and x squared plus y squared equals r squared and those should not be hard to memorize because as always x goes with cosine y goes with sine this last one is just the pythagorean theorem so um, write the polar form of the rectangular equation y equals 2 well we know that y is r sine theta and our goal here is to change from x's and y's to r's and thetas and so by changing that I meet my goal now the way I want to write my answer is I want to be solved for y and as simplified as possible so I'm gonna divide by sine theta to get r by itself but there's one more thing I can do here I can um, change 2 over sine theta and make it be 2 cosecant theta, which is uh, as nice as you can make that look. So there you go, r equals 2 cosecant theta. You can check your answer uh, by going on your calculator in polar mode and you actually type in 2 divided by sine theta and you should get a line that looks like y equals 2 if you did it right. So that's nifty if you ask me. 14, x squared plus y squared equals 9. So I want to change x squared plus y squared into r squared, which 9 will just say 9. Now if I'm solving for r, um, that means I would square root both sides because there's not an r on the right side. Um, so I can't just divide by r on both sides. I'm going to square root. Now when we're in rectangular equations and we square root we have to put a plus or minus sign but for polar uh, equations we don't because if I think about r equals 3 and r equals negative 3 r equals 3 is a circle because it's all of the points that are out 3 from the origin and r equals negative 3 is the same thing because at any angle I'd be going the opposite way Three, and so I'd still get this circle. So that's why we don't need to do a plus or minus in general for ours is because of that whole, I can have a positive or a negative R and end up getting the same points. So 15, so this part X squared plus Y squared is R squared. This X is going to be R cosine theta to solve this for r, we're going to factor an r out because they both have one. And then, be again, because we have polar equations, we can actually divide by this r and get rid of it because it's basically giving us repetitive solutions that we would already have. And so we get rid of that extra r and then finish solving for r by adding 2 cosine theta over to the other side. And that's our answer. If I plug this into my calculator uh, to check and see if it's right, I should get a circle um, that is off a little bit, which is what this is. x squared plus y squared gives us a circle. The minus 2x part of that means it's been uh, moved over either left or right, I don't know which, probably right, because this is moved to the right. So that's a way of checking yourself to make sure that you got something that's right.
Let's go uh, the other direction, write the rectangular form of the polar equation. If I think real quick about my options, I don't have an option where I just have r. I do have an option where I have r squared. So I either need to multiply both sides by r, or I could square both sides. If I multiply both sides by r, then I'm stuck in the same thing I started with, where there will be an r over here that I can't do anything with. So I need to square both sides, which gives me r squared equals 36. And then I change r squared into x squared plus y squared equals 36. And that's my answer. r equals negative 3 secant theta. So again, I need to, I need, um, like r cosine theta, r sine theta, or r squared in order to change things. So I'm going to do a few things here. I'm going to change secant theta and make it be uh, cosine theta on the bottom, which means that I can cross multiply or multiply by both sides by cosine whatever to get um, r cosine theta equals negative 3. And so r cosine theta is x, so x equals negative 3. Find the polar coordinates of square root of negative 3 over 2 comma 1 half. So those are our rectangular coordinates. So we would, we would graph that as a point that's to the left negative square root of 3 over 2 and up 1 half, which is about here ish. And to find the polar coordinates, we need r and theta. So the radius of this triangle, or whatever, um, we would we could use the Pythagorean theorem, or maybe we realize, hey, this this is a point on the unit circle. Well, how long is the radius of the unit circle? It's one unit, so r is one. Um, this is a 30 degree reference angle, which means to get around to here is 5 pi over 6 for our angle. So our answer is 1 comma 5 pi over 6. Nineteen. Find the polar coordinates of four comma theta. So again, it's helpful to actually graph this out. Four comma theta is uh, right four, not up or down. So r is how far it is to get to that point, the radius, which is four. And our angle, we would either write as zero or two pi. So you could write 4 comma 0, or you could write 4 comma 2 pi. You don't have to write both, just one of those is fine. But that's kind of interesting because um, it's 4 comma 0 both ways. Anyway, moving on. 20, the rectangular coordinates. So they gave us r and theta, and we want x and y. And so to do that, we're going to do r cosine theta and r sine theta because we are still doing basically a triangle 4 comma pi over 6 we go to pi over 6 and our this line that we would draw is a has a length of 4 and so what we're trying to do is find this x and y and we do that by using cosine and sine, because we know this angle is pi over 6, and we know the hypotenuse, and so we're just using sine and cosine. So cosine of pi over 6 is mm, square root of 3 over 2, and sine of pi over 6 is a half, and then we're multiplying by 4, and so things cancel so that we get 2 square roots of 3 and 2. 2 square roots of 3 comma 2 is our answer. Now, find the rectangular coordinates of 3 comma 300. So, 
again, we could graph it and look at it, um, or I can just know that, hey, it's going to be 3 cosine 300 degrees, 3 sine 300 degrees. Um, so I would figure out cosine of 300 and sine of 300, which 300 is over in the fourth quadrant, um, and that means that cosine would be positive a half and sine would be negative square root of 3 over 2. So this doesn't really simplify, it just gets put together. 3 halves comma negative 3 square roots of 3 over 2. Okay, so on 22, it gives us some equations. Now, on your review, it might say r equals r plus cosine theta here, and uh, that didn't make any sense to me personally, and so you want to change it to this, 1 plus 2 cosine theta. Now, all we've got to do to identify these curves is plug into our calculator in polar mode, and if something weird shows up or do nothing shows up, Make sure, obviously, we need to be in polar mode, but we also want to be in radians. And you would want to maybe uh, do zoom standard. Make sure you've got a good window. Um, but other than that, I don't know why you'd have a problem graphing these. So I stuck pictures of what these look like. So this first one, A, this is called a cardioid because it's supposed to look kind of like a heart if you pretend like obviously the this part of it's not pointed like the way we think of hearts you know cartoony kind of hearts but if you get rid of that part oh look it looks like a heart um yeah anyway so a is a cardioid b is just a circle c is a limousine which technically that's a fancy C, but whatever, with an inner loop. Uh, and then last, we've got a rose curve. And so these two, the circle and rose, shouldn't be hard, but you need to make sure to remember that um, the name for this kind of graph is a cardioid. The name for this is a limosome with an inner loop. And finally, Let's plot some points. So the way this works is we um, we draw our angle first, and then we draw our radius. And so let me actually get this all on my screen. There we go. So. Draw our angle, which for this first one is pi over 4. Pi over 4 is this direction. But negative 2 means I actually need to go this way. And so you can make a big deal about um, drawing circles, but that's a whole lot of work. All we really need to do is make two tick marks this direction, and our dot goes on the second tick mark. And so this point right here is negative 2 comma pi over 4. So this one, 1 comma negative 2 pi over 3, negative 2 pi over 3 is down here, and a positive 1 means I'm going to go out 1 along this line, and my point is right there. Negative 1 comma 30, 30 degrees is here, but a negative one means I need to go this other direction, one. So I go out one this way, and then I draw my point. That was a terrible color to pick. There, there's my point right there. And that, that's all we've got, folks.